Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I wanted to talk about Arches Paper. Now they have had a really interesting trajectory over the years and a really rich history. So while I will get into some of the products they own and make, I want to talk about who they've been owned by. So there are parent companies that buy subsidiaries and brands all over the world and Arches has gone back and forth and merged with many of them. And so every once in a while I will be on a forum and I will see somebody write, oh yeah, Canson owned or owns Arches. That's not true and I'm going to explain what happened. Now I'm not going back to the beginning of Arches history, which starts in the late 1400s, but they do have a really nice timeline on their webpage and I will link that. I will also link all the articles I went through to try and make sense of this for my brain because my brain's tired and now it hurts. So basically, I'm gonna start in the 50s. In the 1950s, Ajimori Paper Making Group formed with these four other groups. And at the time, Arches was a brand they owned and Canson was a brand they owned. It was not made by the same group. Now, in 19... 91, Ajimori merged with Wiggins and became Arjo Wiggins. We're going to keep going, it gets worse. In 2011, Arjo Wiggins sold Arches to Mooksjo, which was like a Finnish um, fiber, manufacturer of fiber-based products. And in 2017, Mooksjo merged with Alstrom and became Alstrom Mooksjo. Now, another thing happened in 2017 that I think caused a huge chunk of confusion is that Cal Art, which is an international supplier of art material, all they do is supply art supplies. They became the exclusive worldwide distributor of arches. So Ulstrom Mooks Joe was the parent company that owned arches, but Cal Art distributed the paper. Now Cal Art is a parent company in itself and they have brands and subsidiaries like Windsor Newton, Liquitex, Contea Paris. If you want to see everything they own, I'll link it. But Cal Art <laughs> is a subsidiary of Lindergruppen, which is another parent company. So what I mean by parent company is a parent company is just a company that has a controlling interest in another one and it gives it control over its operations. Now it's between those two companies how hands-on or hands-off they want to be. So, <laughs> Canson went its own direction. In 2006, uh, Hamlin acquired Canson. And then in 2016, Fila, and I don't mean Fila like the shoes, I mean F-I, L-A. It's an acronym. It stands for Fabrica Italiana Lapis de Affini. Okay, <laughs> so that, that's 2016 is when Canson became under that parent company. Now in 2020, Fila also acquired Arches, um, March 2nd of 2020 to be exact. So under the Fila parent company, they own Canson, Dollar Rowley, Dixon Ticonderoga, which are a really nice uh, pencil, Lucas, Maymary, Prang, and Arches. So they're under all these subsidiary groups. Now, <laughs> over the years, there has been um, differing qualities of paper, and I'm not sure because those were the years that things merged and bought and were sold. And the reason things merge and get purchased it could be for like a multitude of reasons. It, you know, it could be for investment. It could be to maintain a company, keep a company, keep things afloat. There's so many reasons why companies do this and make these types of investments and mergers. But some, like in 2008-ish, 2009, Water, the watercolor paper was really splotchy and it was inconsistent and I'm not sure what had happened but that's sort of where the rumors of Canson owning 
arches came from and that's it's just not true so <laughs> they went their own direction they went their own way now arches has a lot more than watercolor paper this is what i have i have a pad that's gummed at the top and this is a 300 gram and i will always link my video as to why you should do grams and not pounds and this is the cold press so it is the textured paper, it does feel a little scratchy. It's 100% cotton. Their paper is absolutely wonderful. Um, it's probably my favorite watercolor paper out of all the ones I have tried um, for the price point. So I have not tried some of the other ones, but I'm doing a no buy, so that's gonna have to wait till 2023. But I have tried um, the Waterford, the Canson Heritage, a lot of those, those are really pricey. So I kind of stick to arches because it's so readily available. And this is actually something I can buy where I live, which is pretty rare because <laughs> we only have like one art supply store. So I can find arches there and I can find this one. Um, the other product I own, and this is a block. So it is glued on all four sides. And at the top here is where you can stick things through and it has a black sheet to protect it. I haven't used any yet. And you can divide it out. You stick sort of a pen in and you go all the way around the edge and you can unglue it and unstick it. This is the 640 gram cold press. And I like this for commissions. I may actually dip into this depending on how my no buy goes for the year. But I want to talk about some of the other products. So they make, Arches makes drawing um, paper in a pad. It's 200 or 180 grams. They have a sketch pad that's 105 grams. Um, in 2012, they came out with oil paper and that's 300 grams. I have read the reviews on that and it seems to be pretty absorbent. So I would say do your research of what you like with oil paper. Um, and then this also comes in loose paper and rolls if you want watercolor that way. And it comes in hot press and rough and all the different ones. Um, they have a plantain paper that's 320 GSM. This is a photographer's paper and it has a deckled edge. It's really, really beautiful. They have a silk screen paper that's 300 grams. They have a text wove paper for working on calligraphy that's really, really nice. It's 120 grams. And they have cover papers that range from 250 to 270 grams. And those would be for like printmaking and publishing. So Arches really does a nice supply of paper for all the different creators. Um, they do not have a sketch pad, which if you go on Etsy, you will find creators taking Arches paper and doing sort of Copic, binder, Copic binding or stab binding to create their own watercolor sketchbooks for, ske for sale and stuff. But I use this predominantly watercolor and then some for pastel. So pastels work really, really well with rough surface and you can build up the layers. And so arches can do double duty for both supplies. Now, <laughs> I'm talking about this because I'm kind of, I'm going to be doing a demo on a Friday doing pastels. And I want to show you Friday how Arches performs with pastels. I will link some videos of other people doing pastel videos with different paper, and I will link videos of other people comparing 100% cotton watercolor papers to each other. I started using this in the 1990s. Um, I've loved it ever since. There has been quality differences throughout the decades, but right now it is really, really nice. And I always recommend it to artists and creators who A, are not doing a no buy, B, have budget space, and C, want to up their quality of painting and art to the next level. Because that's what this paper does. It's a, because it's 100% cotton, it's so bright and vibrant and it blends and it lifts and it just, it does everything you want in a high quality watercolor paper. I hope this video helps. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.